Morning guys, we've just came to Summer Lee Industrial Museum. We'd never actually heard of this and it was Natalie's bra Craig that had put us onto this. So we're going to go in and have a wee look, see what it's like. The past we inherit, the future we build. And here's just a wee bit of information on the museum. Here's just a massive punching and shearing machine. Look at the size of that. If I'm honest, I don't even know what this does. It was used in the workshop. What was it used for? Just steam powered winding the engine, I don't know. You don't know, you're just making it up. I think the iron comes in here and this is the punching mechanism. And then on the other side here is the shearing mechanism. So obviously the iron or whatever would come through here and this would come down and cut it. So we've got a real steam crane here. This thing's cool. I've never seen something like this in my life. Obviously it runs on the railway tracks. I just came inside where it's considerably warmer. Ah, it's pretty chilly outside. This place is cool in here, look at this. This is amazing. We're just about to start our wee tour of the inside here, so let's get going. We've got a wee bit here just to find more, find out more about women's lives in the 1950s. And some of the stuff they would have. Did anybody have these things here for the toilet roll? That's cool. Natalie just says, is this old guy here sitting in this dog? And also, he doesn't look too happy. Look at the face on him. This little lassie looks like a pure 40 year old woman as well. What one? The bigger one. So she does, actually. This amazing painting of Gart Sherry by Knight. Look at that. Look at the size it is well compared to Natalie. We've also got this amazing, like, steel. I don't really know what it is, to be honest, these steel panels, but they're pretty cool. And on the windows here, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's got, like, the police fighting a guy here. It's got workers tossing a cable. It's really cool. There's a wee bit here you can come and have your lunch as well, which is pretty cool looking. Just come and sit down with the kids or whatever, have something to eat, a wee view outside and that. I've got a TV up here. I don't know if it plays anything. They've also got free Wi Fi as well. So, this big bowl here was actually used to make famous boiled sweets. King's famous boiled sweets. Look, just look at the size of it in comparison. Look at that. Just to make sweeties. A lot of sweets. And here's some of the labels from some of the sweeties that were made. We've got like Battle Axe Rose Chew, Iron Brew Crunch from King's, some glucose barley sugar. I've never heard of any of these things. I don't oh, know lemon sherbets. But I'm sure there's a few of our, our mums and dads that will remember them. Yeah, I think there is. And what's this big container here? Um, I'm actually 100% I'm not sure, it doesn't take it down, there's no label anywhere. This is some weird contraption, isn't it? Yeah. Here's some battle axe staff filling up some boxes. Yeah. We've got a Cardone winding machine here. Or engine, sorry. Look at the size of the wheel. It stretches all the way down there as well. It says it carries men and coal. Men and coal? Right, well, is that a bit like a steam train? Yeah. Look, it's me my dresses for back in the day. I think this is what they used to wear when they went out. This is one of the guys that used to work in the cinema, the usher's uniform. I mean, could you imagine going to the cinema and the guy behind the till was wearing something like this? These jam jars? They were saying that you could get into the cinema bringing your jam jars. Children returned empty jars to shopkeepers for a penny and the admission would be a Saturday morning matinee. That is crazy. So there you go. Save up your jam jars everyone, you can get into the cinema for free. There's a wee bit here just talking about the golden age of the silver screen. And then they've got this old school cinema seat. Look at the nick of that. Would you like to sit in something like that? Would you drink that way? I look comfy. It does, doesn't it? I bet you if you went and hit it, it'd be like the old trains where all the dust would come off. Look at the size of the projectors they used to use in the cinemas. I bet they're nowhere near this size now. Look at that. Big reel to reel at the top as well. Or the film, sorry. Well, it actually looks like a gun. 
Check out this old school motorbike. That's pretty cool. I think it's seen better days, but. So this was on the front of a co-op building in Murray Hall in Coat Bridge. Just look how amazing that is. Imagine all our wee shops and that had this on the front of it. Just go and give you a wee close-up as well. That is brilliant. Welcome to the co-op. What are we going for bread, son? I would take some cheese, please. Some cheese? Just a wee bit? Just a wee bit. So do I need to pay in bean bags? Um, no, you need to pay with money, sir. Well, why are you using bean bags? It's telling you how much it is. Oh, right. So this yellow bag is 50 grams apparently. The green bag's 100. And the red's 25. And the blue's 200 grams? Yeah. I don't think it works, I'll be honest with you. It's definitely not 300 grams. This is an old school delivery bike for the 1930s. Imagine the guys that worked at Deliveroo scooted about the town in one of these. Got these wee guys in their bar. I love that. That is pretty cool. Having the time of their life. There you go, they've just came to life now. Oh, what's just happened? We just went into a nightclub. This is how we used to party back in the day. Obviously Natalie's not got the dance moves. Here's how they'd all be dressed when they all went out in the night out. Imagine you went up Glasgow and you seen everybody dressed like that. <laughs> When we were walking round, Natalie thought this was a real guy. <laughs> I got such a fright. So this lady was a sweetie lady, and here's all the sweets. Have candy. Oh, these are some pretty cool flags. I like this one here. That's cool. I really do like how, because we're in an industrial place, all this stuff here is like, that's like shutters. It's a cool effect. Natalie's just going to the co-op to do her wee shopping. And you can buy everything in here. You can get super old cream, whatever the hell that is. And the an one beside your rock cubes. That is pretty strange. Look at this Bristol tin. That is weird. I'm pretty sure I remember them. Either that or they brought them back recently. Some of this stuff's cool. Look at the Brillo pads. I remember like the polish and stuff from my grandpa's shed when we were wee. We'll look at some of the old classrooms here. And then look, wee table. So you just keep all your stuff in here, your jotters and stuff. Probably your iPad in that now. And then we get some of the kids here just playing about. Get a wee recreation of the classroom. Looks like they're all at a heavy metal concert. And Natalie's favourite thing, the dentist. I was at the dentist yesterday and I got to say and I feel like my face is out to here, but I am so happy that it didn't look like this. It was much cleaner. I know, imagine that was your dentist. Look at the neck of that chair. And proper anaesthetic, none of this gas stuff. And these tools, oh my goodness. I know, just have a wee look at the tools. That is crazy. I mean, what are some of these things, man? I mean, what, what are these? Oh, they're for your, your teeth. Patrick came with me yesterday with any of these, I would have ran. Smoker's cough. Get your chest x-rayed. Look at this. We were big on getting your chest x-rayed back then. You on the phone to Natalie? Dr Bell. Dr Bell, what's he saying? He's talking about being in labour for, for three to four days. 
So apparently when you had scarlet fever back in the day in Motherwell, they just put you outside? That happened quite a lot, like in America and stuff, like there's a really famous walking place called Waverly Hills and a lot of the stuff with the wind was open because we got fresh air was helping but obviously it was just spreading the region. So these two wee trailers are what the fire brigade used to use. This one here was obviously to shoot all the water up at the building and this one here used to pump all the water. And it says here that the trailer design enabled them easily to drag across the rubble and bomb damaged streets, which is pretty cool. It looks so weird for what you would expect a fire engine to look. Here's just a wee picture in the background just showing you some of the fire men. Hey right, Natalie, are you going to get your workout in? Show us your muscles. Yeah. So this machine just in front of you, I use one of these in my old work, or I used to use one of these, sorry, in my old work. This is obviously on a grander scale, but I used to use it for countersinking things, drilling brass plates, and sometimes milling. Here is a certificate for the iron molders. It's a membership certificate. What size is it? It's like a book. I think it's a bit bigger than a book. Ah, well, okay, it's a wee bit bigger than a book. It's like a poster, should I say? I think we made like little pens in the background. All right, so this is some of the things he's made. I really like how they've got the beams here going across the ceiling too. That's really cool. Check out this old school Hoover. That is crazy. So this big massive machine here makes question marks. That's a hook, that's no question mark. Got a wee exhibit here showing you how to fix steel together. So you've got screwed, bolted, welded. Glued, nut and bolt. This bit here at the back's glued. And then nut, bolt and riveted. Giving you a wee overview of where we are. So we are right at the back of the hall now, and that's where we came in and started. This big chimney here. This whole place is amazing. The theming all the way through is brilliant, and some of these machines around the edges are so cool. Just showing you a factory here, some people working in it. I would not like to do what these guys do. This does not look like a fun job. This is a cracking picture wall of all the workers. Here's how they produce steel. They melted it down inside here. Here's just a wee look at some coal. Then we've got iron ore. Looks a wee bit like an egg. Then we get some limestone here. We are being furnace keepers for today. And we're going to try and power this furnace and see what happens. Yeah, it's failed a couple of times already. It's quite hard, this. It's not an easy way to keep a living. Oh, the fillers have been added, the top bit's lit up. Oh, the furnace is heating up a bit. These are the firemen at the moment. We're adding some hot air to burn the furnace. How are you getting on? You finding it? It's easier than I thought. He says that, but we've already failed a few times doing this. I'm ready. Wow. It's burning pretty hot. And if 
we look down here, it's come out of the furnace. And we'll just follow it and see what happens. Oh wow. Good job. That's pretty cool. I done that. You did do that. You could just quit your job now and become a, a keeper. Right. I could. I think I should become a furnace keeper. I think you should work hard at it. I think I was good at it. The building, the viewing platform for the outside is really cool looking. Actually reminds me, is it the Sydney Opera House? Yeah. So there's a wee bit set up here about the trench warfare from the First World War. And we're just about to head in. We're going into battle guys. Be prepared. They were usually zigzag. Right. It's telling us there's danger. Just be careful. Off. That way they used. A skilled, skilled rifleman can fire 15 rounds per minute and it was accurate to about 600 metres, although the range was 1,400 metres. You gonna go in there to hide? On you go. No, I'm going in. You're going in. On you go. You can go in, it's pretty muddy. Okay, I'm getting vessel. stuck in. Oh. This is where we came in and we spend the night just sitting in here. I don't really like this. Hello. You point your gun at you, shoot me. Here's some soldiers on a trench. I definitely don't think I'd like to do that. And here's just a wee bit of information about a soldier's life in a trench. It says here that enemy attacks often happened at the end of the day, so daylight hours were spent repairing trenches and other physically hard routine and chores. Imagine you were just about to go to sleep and just chilled out with your wee hot chocolate in your book and then boom, 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 bombs everywhere. Have a lot of chocolate in a book. Well, I might take my book. It says there's also mud rats, flies, lice, fleas, and dead bodies. Oh, yuck. We're just going to go see if we can see Mr. Spock on his boat today. So this is the Vulcan, Scotland's first iron boat. It says here that it was built completely of iron and it had no engine and it was pulled by two horses. I thought that was just canal boats, that's really cool. That is quite cool. This is where we hear Vulcan voices. Nah, it's not working today. Let's see what we can have a wee look through the periscope and see what we see. So we're going to show you Mary Hill. One is Port Dundas, and then the next one is Glasgow. I'm pretty sure the boat didn't look like this back in the day, but I do really like the colour scheme on the seats. So I know it's not really getting to do with Summer Lee, but how cool is Natalie's new bag? And then she's got all her pins on them. This one here, by the way, she made herself. I love it. How cool is that? Let us know what you think of her bag and a wee homemade pin. We've got a Bumblebee bulldozer here, guys. If Bumblebee was a bulldozer, 
here would be this one. I know it's when we came in there was a tram as well. I think it's 165 all day. I can't remember how much children was. But you can see the tram tracks all the way around here. I think it takes you to see if you walk and all the way around here. But it is a nice walk, but it might be a fun to have a shot on the tram. I don't think it's running today though. There's some of the looms. Smells funny in here. That smell a wee bit funny, doesn't it? I don't really know what that is. It's cute though, I like the wee sheep. The sheep are cool. Here's a wee living room for the 1980s. See if any of recognise any of this stuff. I had a cabbage patch doll. Did you have one of them? Her name was Natasha and she had like hair you could like crimp, it was like made of pipe cleaners and you could like comb it and crimp it and stuff. It was so fun. And Skeletrix, we must have all had a Skeletrix. I don't think, did anybody have something like this, the exercise bike? I don't remember anybody having them. And a couch. Well, this is like all my uncle's old couches and my grand's and stuff like that. My nan and papa used to have a main like that and we used to have to polish the glass and stuff. What, a fireplace like that? Yeah. It's dusty. And definitely everybody had one of these. These must have had. <laughs> so we head into a wee house from the 1910s. Oh, I can smell the, the fireplace. My goodness, it's so much different than the 1980s. I know, 70 years and just look at the difference. Imagine you showed a lot of the kids nowadays a house like this. I don't think you'd fit into that bed. No, I think I would struggle as well. And then the bath. You definitely wouldn't fit in that bath. That's like the bath we had when we went to Paris. This is a cute wee street of all the houses. So this one here we went into is the 1980s. This one here is the 1910s. And um, we're just going to work our way down and see what the rest of them are. This is the 1880s. So we're going back the 1880s. It's not actually that much different for the 1910s. No, it's not. It's only 30 years difference. This one here definitely is a lot older, but it doesn't actually tell us a time frame. Everything's just bare concrete and it looks rough to live here. And as you probably heard just there at the start, Natalie reckons this place is haunted. I definitely think this whole place is haunted. I love the re-bikes. We should all get one of these. Right, what is this one? Oh. It's a wash house. A wash house. Now, imagine this, guys. That you don't have a washing machine, and this is where you came with all your pals and the whole street, and you washed your clothes together. You got all the gossip. This is basically showing you here. No running water and outside toilets. That does not sound like fun. So, this is the wash house and it was introduced to the miners row in the period around 1880. It served all the families in the row with each family being allocated a day of the week to use it. Oh my goodness, I had a jacket like that. Did you? I, I love uh, it. You have a jacket like that, Natalie? This is a totally different design. It's the same no, colour, but I used to have jacket. one exactly the same as that. Right. Surely he's, one of your grannies had a mirror like this. Because I know mine did. Look at the dining room. It's so fun. So they have a dining room here as well as a living room, unlike the other ones where it's just a whole house in one. This one's starting to resemble an actual house now. I like it. The 1960s. This is a groovy one, eh? That's a carpet. Oh, that is a carpet. Actually, funny story, our house the now that we stay in is my granny's and it had this style of carpet in it and it had this sort of colour scheme in it as well. And see this clock? I'm pretty sure my gran had one like this. Maybe it had more gold in it and definitely these birds. Why did everybody have these birds at one time? I was just about to be nosy and going for a wee look in the window of the, the... I can't remember what house it is actually, I think it's a 1960s house. Just check out the toilet. In the bath. 
Oh, that is some wallpaper. Keep going. Oh, that washing machine's ridiculous, look, isn't it? The old school sinks. I remember these. All my crazy colours. This is a 1960s kitchen. Look at that fridge. The colour scheme in it. That is a colour scheme. I mean, it's like colours that don't even go together. I remember these as well. Do you remember your grands or anybody having cups and uh, teapots that colour? Here's where you just do your washing here. No more wash houses. Just come here and do it in the back of your house. In the 1940s. Oh, that's a rough looking kitchen. It really is. <laughs> Look where you just put your, your laundry. Uh, I don't know if I like this. Look at this pretty cool train. It's a wee bit beaten up. But there's a wee sign here on the side saying, would you like to work on this? They're looking for some volunteers to help them restore it. So if you like trains or you'd like to come and help with this, then just give them a phone or an email, I think it is. Here's the information actually here to let you see exactly what it says. So guys, that's been our trip to Summerlee and it's been brilliant today, isn't it? I've had a really good time. We were here for about two hours. We got here just after 10. It opens at 10. It's free, Aye. so that's good. On a side note, bring some cash because I only bring my card and there's trams running but they're not running today and there's a mine tour which isn't running today. It was £1.10 and the tram I think was one sixty, but they don't take cards so bring some cash with you and you can enjoy them. Right, and we're off. See you later. Bye bye.